So the the clown that can use um, uh, the endless uh, handkerchief. Yeah. I almost imagine that as like a whip, like kind of hermit purple ish. Just oh like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Being able to mm-hmm. just like sling it around, and they're, yeah. they're a lot more quick mm-hmm. and stuff than than strong. You know? Yeah, they are because they they do. Um, well, no, I was gonna say that they do prathals, but that's specifically the rogues got. Uh, thing and then and then when they maybe they meet up with the uh, or they they go to the land of the trapeze people that that, that it's, one it's sleight of hand oh yeah, the, the Michelangelo go. that's his thing it, it's it's specifically under sleight of hand so yeah. He, yeah that's why he's so quick and light he's always like taking yeah. watches and uh, wallets and all that and pulling handkerchiefs out yeah anyway and his, his uh he gets even better at it when mm-hmm. he meets the trapeze people because now they're like this is how you can do acrobatics acrobatics with it and yeah he's like, whoa trained with these folks and mm-hmm. now i'm cooler like maybe there's all these different lands of you know circus performer types and like the rogue one learns more strength abilities from the strong men mm-hmm. tribe I, ho- I hope in the strong men tribe they're all pretty asexual looking but even like they just look all look like big beefy men just, but the yeah. women just have like longer hair or something mm-hmm. <laughs> they have all have like the I, same I think, voice yeah they all have the same voice i think they all have the same physique there's just a small very tiny indicator as to what their yeah. gender is but it doesn't matter yeah. because they're all just like uh like that that I haven't watched Adventure Time in a long time, but what I've been seeing lately is there's like this big strong lady. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't watched Adventure Time in a very long time. There's, I don't there's know too much for me to catch up on. Yeah. I'm I'm out. I'm out. It took too long to really start getting into yeah. the, the the deeps. Yeah. And it's just like you never know when you're gonna have story or when you're just gonna have. Let's follow this. Uh, Jake's tail around for an episode. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I don't want to at all. Yeah, that's I fell off really hard on, on that particular episode. There was like an episode. I, I don't think, think I even it, got to that. I think one. it was literally just following Jake's tail mm-hmm. around, and it was like a there was no dialogue if I mm-hmm. remember correctly, and I was just like, what's going on? Yeah. And I watched a bit, and like Finn found his father and lost his hand. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is starting to get you know back into the story but then it immediately had a non-story episode and i was just like fuck adventure time exactly for every for every bit where it's uh marceline and the ice king back right after the bombs fell Mm -hmm. and just trying to survive for every episode like that there's two where it's like oh we're just gonna beatbox yeah and fucking fight samurai named slonin i'm so i I wonder if that is a pun on ronin (laughs) it's fucking weird I, uh, yeah, the, and then you have, because you have things like Gravity Falls or Steven Universe where mm-hmm. it's like 80 to 90% story. Steven Universe, I'd say, is more 60 40. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because they, they have plenty of episodes, but even in the episodes where they're not specifically uh, pushing the story forward, there's still progression mm-hmm. with Steven where he's learning something new about himself yeah. or the gems or what he can do. Growing or, as a person. Yeah, something like that. Whereas Gravity Falls is like that's ninety five, like, oh, that's yeah. like ninety percent story. There's maybe two episodes that you can just cut out and it wouldn't make any difference. But it, as you're watching it, you kind of need those episodes. You to need take that, a breather. You need that light break where uh, Grunkle Stan almost gets eaten. Look at this fucking look at these what? sex beasts. I thought it was good. I I glanced. I thought it was Stroker. Oh but... yeah, Stoker <laughs> is no better though. <laughs> oh yeah. Ooh, ah. I, I think one of the only episodes you could cut out from Gravity Falls is the one where they meet the the, the spider lady. Yeah. But you kind of need that, because, yeah, that's that's the last fun time episode before you get into Weird Mageddon. And it, it's a good little, hey, dudes, don't be a jerk episode. Yeah, it, it, yeah it's one last little bit of uh, character growth for... Dipper. Dipper, before the end of the summer. Yeah. Oh my god, that show. Yeah. Oh yeah, the, the frustrating mechanic to this fight is only one of these is actually... All of these can attack you. Only one of them can be attacked at a time. And is there's it, no indicator as to which one it is. And does it change? It changes. That's dumb. That's why I'm using Gil Toss, even though it's using like 8,000 Gil a Toss. Simply because, hey, it's, it's if it's hitting all of them, that means it's hitting the one I need to hit. 
And then every time it hits the right one, it's just like, ooh. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, Stoker. Yeah. So I, I think the the Goofy Clown, God, that's a weird thing to say, but the Goofy Clown, um, his deal very specifically is that he's very talented at what he does, but he's also very, um, what's, what's the word where you're not trying very hard? Where you're just resting on your laurels. Uh, complacent? Complacent, thank you. Yes, he's very complacent. Right? And that's mm -hmm. why he has that, that moment where he runs out of the scarves. is because he's never really trying. Yeah. He's like someone who exercises and, and just kind of hit a plateau but didn't mm -hmm. mind. And so what were the other clowns are always trying to push themselves to be better, to be stronger, to be a better leader, to, to you know be more intelligent and craft yeah. better machines. He's fine with where he is. And that becomes a problem because their enemies are only getting stronger. Yeah. And there are moments like that where he and the kids are stuck up on top of this bluff or wherever. Mm. And like he's the only one who can get them down, but he, he doesn't believe in himself enough yeah. and he's not willing to try hard enough. That would be such good character growth. Yeah. Oh my god. And then from that moment where he, he he's hit his limit and normally he'd be like fine with it, like whatever, but he finally bursts past his limit. And just fucking goes for it. Imagine if Clown Warriors became a show, and then people like cried over. Look how close <laughs> this fight was. Yeah, and then forty-two. <laughs> Butts is like, whoa, holy <laughs> shit. Maybe not celebrate so hard, Butts. <laughs> if people cried over the the moments in Clown yeah. Warriors, yeah. Like, why am I crying at this show? <laughs> yeah. What is wrong with me? Like, it's one thing to tear up when Grunkle Stan's memories are burning away. Oh, yeah. And he's like, at least I'm good for something. Yeah. Like, that's one thing. But then the cry when fucking... When, a... when the rogue clown is hitting the ground and going, honk! Yeah. Honk! And honk! Like... <laughs> and it's just me going, honk! And you hate yourself for... for everything yeah. you hate yourself for crying yeah. at a stupid show <laughs> like why is it so powerful but it's yeah. making me laugh and i'm just like i'm mad that i'm laughing at the yeah. sadness but then i'm mad that i'm crying at it too oh, i don't God. know how to feel about <laughs> this i'm i'm also in love with the image of just clown pecs yeah because yeah. because you know how all hero cartoon heroes were built in the 80s right uh -huh. that's basically how these guys are built yeah. Almost like JoJo characters, yeah. just take it down twenty percent. Yeah. Or you know the more life characters a bit like later or, JoJo characters, or like a but mixture still. of the later versus like you know you got yeah. your Joseph clown, then you uh -huh. have your whatever the you know uh, speedball yeah. run or yeah you have your diamond is unbreakable. Yeah, you have your Giornas and your um, Joey Joe stars. Yeah. Right? I think that I think that is who it is in uh, speedball run is Joey Joe star, but. Uh, <laughs> So, but just beefy, uh, muscular, athletic clowns. And I imagine, like, top-notch voice acting. Oh, it, it wouldn't work without it. And, like, so... And, like, really just good... It wouldn't work without it yeah. because it need, Like we said, it needs to be played straight. Uh -huh. You need good voice actors in there who like, can look at this yeah. material and say, on the first take, hey, guys, quit clowning around and sell it. Yeah. It's like, that. that that's basically the entire... That's basically the entire audition. Yeah. Is we put the voice actor in front of us, we explain the whole scenario to them and say, now read the line. <laughs> and if we die, if we fucking die, yeah. <laughs> they get the job. Because there are going to be people coming and like, hey guys, quit clowning around. It's like, get out. Get the fuck out. Just butt, get the fuck out. <laughs> just flip our own table. By the last audition, the table's got like band aids on it. <laughs> yeah. And like an ice pack That's on the top of the table. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like one of those like, old school ice packs. Yeah, that they like always have. Yeah. yeah, where it's all just kind of lumpy. Uh huh. With like the cap on the top. Ex yeah, exactly. The little cap. Oh, poor table. <laughs> oh my god. Like, and really good score and really good sound yeah. design. I, everything about this is a, a serious modern cartoon. Uh -huh. It's just fucking clowns. Like, it, like I said, the Hulk. Like, I think there are a couple of moments we would really need to, to like, story... Like, there, you put together the pitch package, and you want to put together the two or three moments mm -hmm. which sell the whole concept. And yeah. it'd be, like, the Hall like of the Heroes... the range of yeah. the two. The, the concept and the range, because it's like, we got to get people to realize that, no, this is a serious show. 
they're just fucking clowns. Yeah. And so there's the the Hall of the Fallen bit. Because that's, like I said, all these eggs with clown faces painted on them. But super serious mm -hmm. and solemn, and there are people in there literally crying. <laughs> and it's this touching moment. So that's one. And you have that bit, I think, with the the rogue clown. Like in the, I imagine like rain, rain, and it has and to rain. And I don't care if it's a cliche; it has yeah, to rain, so that it has all. Well, yeah, because it's supposed to be goofy, and at yeah. this point, that is kind of goofy, but it does sell the drama even more. And like, uh, like yeah, just rain, and at night, and like screaming into the wind as mm -hmm. punching the ground and, and the haunting. Yeah. <laughs> so that, and then the intro, I think. It's so yeah. like pitch these four bits. So that people get it, and, and do a do a storyboard, do an actual like voice, uh -huh. simply voice animatic for yeah, the bit yeah. where they're he's hit, pounding his fists into the ground, and like uh, because this, this is I imagine a good time for that would be when he realizes that he will never be the Giuseppe like uh -huh. the successor. Well, because then, because then he can accept it, yeah. right? And then he can move on. It's those moments you have in. Um, actually, I should explain this tower real quick. Then I'll get back to. <laughs> Look at look at Kryle as a black mage. I know she's super adorable. She's so happy yeah. in the save scene too. In, in all of her uh, all of her jobs, she has some sort of hair ornament. Ah, yeah. But um, this these are the twin towers. It's unfortunate, but this game did come out in like '94, <laughs> so I'm not gonna cut this out and just because people aren't over 9/11 yet. Um, these are the Twin Towers. On the one on the left, you can only fight with magic. On the one on the right, you can only fight with physical attacks. Huh. So you, you, you have to send two members up the left tower, two members up the right tower. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Ah, uh, this game! It, it does a lot of stuff like this. This one's a bit frustrating because they didn't, they didn't quite balance it around you only having two party members. This is like or some... They, or they, they... They either didn't balance it properly, or they overtuned it. Mm. So it's like so exactly balanced that you are one turn away from winning or losing. This is like some wild arms shit. Yeah, it is pretty cool. That's right. There was the triple R. Forgot about that. <laughs> but uh, you, they have to take them at the same time, or else they'll explode. It is what the lithograph uh, tells you. So you you go up one side, and one side gives you holy, and the other side gives you uh, medio. <laughs> Alright, sync test. Yeah, basically. <laughs> no shit. Okay. But uh what my my first time doing this, I actually fucked up. Because I didn't realize what would happen if you use magic in the right one or uh -huh. physical attack in the left one. And I had I was curious to see what the effect of the uh Sage's staff would be if I used it on a party member. And so I had, I think, Ferris, because she's a white mage. I had her use the Sage's Staff as a physical attack, mm. and suddenly the enemy cast Meteo on oh. me and killed me. And went, oh, 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 fuck. Man, Minotaurus. Yeah. Uh, so this, for instance, look how much damage he's doing, and because I can't use magic, I can't, I can't heal it. Can't, I can't heal past it. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with that one leg of it. It's weird. The, the, the one on the right, uh, or the the it, one that's facing us yeah, is right. Yeah, his yeah. right. It's weird. Yeah. Minotaurus will be back in Final Fantasy VIII. <laughs> yes. Ah, oh, fucking. With his little brother. Fucking clown warriors. Ah, uh, clown warriors. I imagine, like, at the end, the big bad being like, Who do you think you are? You're just a bunch of. Well, not fucking, but you're just a bunch of fucking clowns, and yeah. you're wrong. We're not just clowns. clowns. We're the clown warriors, and then, and then the score, the intro, the, the intro, intro song, bit. yeah, because exactly. that's the most hype moment. Rem remember, remember when Joseph was riding the the piece of earth up with cars, yeah, and uh, Sanuchino Sadame starts playing. Yeah, now fucking hype that was. Yeah, Jesus Christ, when, I, I just like stood up and was like, yes. When the yes, when the intro song plays in uh -huh. the middle of the show, or or again in Gravity Falls when they're fighting. Um, yeah, Bill. When they're fighting Bill within the big house, uh -huh. and the intro, like the a metal version, I think of yeah. the intro is playing. It makes you just want to, like, I don't know. The feeling is so real when that happens. It's hard to believe. Yeah. It's hard to explain to someone. 
how cool it feels. It is it's, just it's pure fucking <laughs> hype. You're just like imagine it's like Clown Warrior. Exactly. And they're like kicking his ass, and it's because like, oh it, I think the 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 intro song starts off with someone basically yelling Clown Warriors in you know uh, as if they're singing, uh -huh. but when when it plays in that moment, they just. The, the character just says clown warriors in the part where the person would normally yell it. Yeah. It's like, yes! And we're like, we get in contact with former singer of Three Inches of Blood. Yeah, Cam Pipes. Yeah. 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 We're like, Cam, Cam, clown yeah. warriors. I, I have the feeling. <laughs> I have, I don't, <laughs> I don't know him personally. I don't know anything about his personal life. <laughs> From listening to Three Inches of Blood for the past ten years, yeah, I have the distinct feeling that if you said Clown Warriors to him, he would lean back and steeple his fingers and listen to and whatever he had to say take, next. Take a deep inhale and then uh -huh. scream this. Yeah, Clown Warriors it just like escalates and we're yeah. just like being blown back. Like, yeah. oh. Clown Warriors. Oh god, can you get the band together just to do the Clown Warriors song that happens at the end when they're fighting the boss? <laughs> yeah? Okay. <laughs> oh fuck, that'd be cool. That'd be way- that'd be the best. That'd be the only way to do it. It'd be one of those moments where you just go, I can die now. Yeah. I can die now. This that, is fine. That's the headline of- of every, like, article online talking about Clown War mm -hmm. Warriors is like, I can die happy now. Yeah. I watched Clown Warriors. Yeah. Like, there's nothing better in the world. <laughs> Man, Om Omniscient looks real fucking groovy. Yeah. Doesn't he just look like the- the design for every Final Fantasy boss to come from now on? It looks like he needs to have a bass and be like, bum 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 Boom, boom, bam, bam. What's great about this guy is he, he, he casts reflect on himself. Sometimes he'll cast reflect on himself after he has cast reflect on himself. So uh, he casts reflect on me. <laughs> but even though he has reflect back and forth. Well, no, because in in earlier Final Fantasies, uh, you could bounce reflect off of if, if the spell was reflected, it would then hit the caster with added potency. Okay. So one strategy you can do, actually, to get around an enemy with Reflect is you cast Reflect on yourself and then cast a spell on yourself so that you oh, will okay. bounce off because it can't reflect back and forth. Does that ever happen in a Final Fantasy where it can bounce back and forth? S specifically Final Fantasy VII. That's what I thought. It's yeah, a little right. frustrating because in that one, in, in earlier Final Fantasies, Reflect lasts a specific amount of time. Mm. Maybe it's a specific amount of casts as well, but at the very least, a certain amount of time. In 7, it's very specifically four casts. Mm. And so, if the enemy has Reflect, and you have Reflect, the spell will bounce back and forth nine times. <laughs> well, no, I, eight times, I guess. It's gonna yeah. hit them, hit you, hit them, hit you, hit them, hit you, hit them. Hit them, them, hit you. Hit you. It's gonna get bounced off of you, and then it's gonna hit them. Does it multiply each time in strength? I or? think it might, but again, it's it's seven, and it maxes out at nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine, and that's not a hard limit to hit. How did that hole in the ocean work? You asked that question a while ago. <laughs> Damn it! We didn't have an answer then either. But again, Final Fantasy does love to have airships come out of uh, bodies of water or sand. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, <laughs> Sid is just having the worst day. Jane, get me off this crazy thing. And then Mid comes in, and he's like, Grandpa! Are you alright? I couldn't save you due to my lack of body strength. You're all sweaty. Grandpa, I'm such a weak boy, you better punish me. No, your, no, with, no. With your sweaty palms. No, no, Mid, no, no. Please don't spank my bottom with your no, sweaty palms, Grandpa. I'm not, I'm not gonna do that, Mid. I'm not. <laughs> No, I'm sweaty. Why are you sweaty, Mid? You're not an athlete. <laughs> you are not an athlete. Oh, fucking clown warriors. <sighs> it just... Uh, it's too good of an idea, but I I wonder how... What we... <laughs> it is too good of an idea, and I think we should make an earnest attempt. Yeah. Like, all, just again, we like we said with uh, Buddy Comedy... And all that. Just put together a simple pitch package. Yeah. Like, right? I, I, I'd look into what, how big a pitch package should be, but at the very least, like, the first three episodes... Maybe the first three episodes were like Samurai Jacks. Mm. Where the first three episodes of that were basically a movie. Yeah. Right? And that sells you on the whole world. 
You watch those three, you get it. You get where Jack is, you know, you know who he is, you know who the bad guys are, you know what the stakes are, you know what his quest is. The fact that his first adventure is with a clan of talking dogs, <laughs> you know that this world can go anywhere. Yeah. So our first three episodes just basically establish that. And then we have, again, the specific moments that which help to sell the overall tone. I, uh, I picture a good pitch package having um, 13 episodes within it, mm -hmm. maybe three completely scripted out, and then, and then like maybe seven or like five that are outlined, yeah. and then the rest that just have taglines mm -hmm. with a title so that you're like, okay, I see. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and so it's like, this show has legs. You guys obviously had thought this out. Yeah, Clown Warriors isn't just a, a, a funny combination of words you yelled one night while mm. recording Final Fantasy V commentary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. How, how did you guys come up with Clown Warriors? Funny story. <laughs> it, the same way we come up with everything. <laughs> Completely at random. Just kind of words came out of my face. And it made us laugh. And then we... <laughs> And then Kurt said, quit clowning around. <laughs> <laughs> and I died. <laughs> and I died. <laughs> uh, I imagine someone doing clown taxes. I don't know why, but just like... Well, they have to collect... Okay, there's... I think... I think even though there needs to be an economy within mm -hmm. Clowntopia, right? I, again, we're coming up in the end of the episode, so I'll get into more of, of that in a moment. But just... Just get ready, audience, because the next episode I'm going to talk a little, little bit about the economic realities of Clowntopia. Sploosh. Also, this is now an all-in-one 